Welcome everyone, Costine here with the discussion about Age of Empires 4, the big patch that we finally got uh, addressing certain balance issues. Though not all of them, there's still plenty of problems that do, do remain in the game and there's also some issues that have been added with the patch apparently with the Abbasids and their Spearmen. But I'm gonna go over the changes that uh, Relic has made for the game and I'm gonna give you my thoughts with it. So you have this message starting the day you'll be able to instate, uh, you'll be able to install update 8324, enjoy the latest features, balance updates and fixes. Okay, so uh, we have uh, features, right? We have features based on community feedback. We've made the decision to implement the ability to enable in-game player scores for those who wish to have them. We know that using this feature can change the way you choose to play the game and we want to empower you to make the choice for yourself. Starting today, you'll be able to enable, okay? All right. Um, so this, uh, the score system is something that did exist in Age of Empires 2 and it was a way to figure out, hey, is my opponent ahead of me? I might be behind, all that kind of stuff. And Age of Empires 2 is a very competitive game. No doubt about it. Um, so having that kind of information is not detrimental to the game being very competitive. It's just you know less surprising when you end up losing, I guess, and less frustrating as well. To be clear, like you understand, oh, it's like how the hell did he do that? Oh, because I've been behind. Well, why have I been behind? Oh, I screwed up my economy. I screwed up my build order. Something along those lines. So that that is actually good. I kind of wish they would uh, just. Uh, enable it full on but obviously that's a design decision for uh, their game uh, we've heard feedback um, that the mini map can be difficult to follow at a glance we've made several adjustments to ensure better readability including the change that is okay icon sizes are noticeably reduced new under icon matches the hud primary town center is now noticeably larger than landmarks zero icon small gold deposit so a couple of changes for the uh, mini map which should improve uh, the readability of it. Uh, and speaking about UI, they've moved the Chinese Dynasty icon and user interface to a less prominent position. Okay, I didn't find it so annoying, but obviously other people did, plenty of other people did. Garrison behavior has been uh, changed to better put you in charge of the decision making while ensuring your economies. Okay, you can start off one, one click. You can turn off one click garrison, meaning your villagers will no longer automatically load into a hole when right clicking and will instead need to be summoned to safely. Uh, safety using the command card icon as well as okay this has its pros and cons of course and that's why it's an option on one hand being able to have the ability to just throw in villagers into a building quickly is uh is beneficial but you may want to repair the 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 outpost as well so it's less annoying if you want to repair something uh, we've introduced new options to campaign mode that allow you to easily jump back into the game as a test a new uh, strategy. From the mission f uh, fail screen, you'll now be able to select load save rather than pathing back. Seems something that they should have had from the start. Some selection improvements have been made in this build. You should be able to find trees, animal corpses. Okay, easier to select. And actually, this this is a life changer in many ways because it was difficult to, hey, I want to select the corpse or I want to select a sheep. Uh, trees, not necessarily so much, but yeah, it's nice uh, that we do have that. And then uh, we have the balance changes. Um, their balance lead, Eric Robel, describes the tension behind these changes as follows. In Age of Empires 4, our goal is to provide high impact unit counters and ensure that most powerful and successful armies include a diverse mix of units. This encourages players to constantly scout one another's towns to get updated information on the kinds of units their opponents are creating and unleash devastating counters. Our balance updates center around ensuring that core unit roster as well as unique units and technologies are working properly to fit this vision. Okay, so the dev team is also keeping a close eye on the ever-evolving meta and are aware of certain specific siege units outperforming its counterpart, Springholds, for those searching for the specific topic. The team is looking to make sure it's reminded of its role uh, as an anti-siege specialist and will be working in with the workshop to deploy it in the future. So uh, they're making, they're going to make, uh, they're going to implement the spring and all nerf. That, that's actually something they've talked about on one of their streams. But... Uh, anyway, so balance changes. Uh, Spearman all ranks bonus damage versus cavalry increase from 3x to 3.5x. So it's 12 to 15, um, 16 to 20, 18 to 23, 22 to 28. Now, this is a good change for Spearman, especially against knights. Spearman just can do very well against knights. This is why you have the French dominating because 
you can't really counter them that easily. Certainly not with Spearman. You try and counter the French Knights with Spearman, you're going to lose. Uh, which is ridiculous because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be able to be Knights with Spearman. So this is a welcome benefit uh, for the to deal with the early game uh, strategy that the French has have, which is to ensure map dominance, get that initiative, and never lose it. This is the this is the problem. This is why the French are doing so well in multiplayer. Other factions may do good in late game, but the French do well in every aspect. And except the Dark Age, they don't have the strongest Dark Age that goes to the Rus. But from the feudal age, just their ability to rush is unparalleled. And just to put pressure, it's not even a question of like, oh, you're going to win with the rush. No, people are getting better at it. But it's just putting pressure, seizing the initiative, seizing map control. And that's something that's difficult, uh, that can be difficult to overcome. Because even if you manage to sex successfully turtle up, you've just left all those resources on the map to your opponent. Um, and he's going to be able to control the flow of the battle. So this kind of change really does help against the French. And it helps against knights in general early on. It makes them more viable. But there are going to be some problems with this in terms of like late game battles. And I'll explain why. Uh, but another thing that they've done. Crossbow and bonus damage versus heavy class increased from 6 to 9. Elite crossbow and bonus versus heavy class increased from 8 to 11. So they've buffed uh, crossbow men. Uh, how do I feel about that? Well, I think, I mean, to an extent, I, I think crossbowmen may have needed it against men-at-arms, sure. But did they need it against knights? I mean, this is going to help them against knights, unless I'm completely mistaken about how that plays out. Uh, is that going to is that going to make crossbowmen even more powerful? Because here, here's the problem. Knights are great in Feudal Age if you can get them, Castle Age, but they're not so great later on in Imperial Age. In fact, they lose a lot of their power. You can still use them, of course, but uh, it's it's more of a case like Feudal Age, uh, Castle Age are, is more about uh, knight armies with some archers. Of course, if you want to go with the archer spearman build, that's going to become more viable, especially now. Uh, but Imperial Age, it's about range superiority and... The change here, the Spearman buff, the Crossbowman buff, they're just going to make Knights less useful than even they are already, and they're not really that great in Imperial Age. We have a meta being developed right now in the game, which is heavily focused on uh, turtling as best as you can, right? And Feudal and Castle Age, unless you can win for a rush, unless you can put that pressure, and then you might win with Rams and the Castle Age, something like that. Um, but turtling, a lot of people do this, and then getting to the Imperial Age and going to full artillery range production. I admit I'm not a f enough fond of that. Anyway, horsemen all ranks range armor increased from 0 to 1. Early horsemen health reduced from 125 to 100. Horsemen health reduced from 155 to 125. So they've got an, a health reduction, which will make them less useful against melee. It does seem that they want to nerf uh, at least some cavalry, um, how they're going to do uh, against melee units, but they're also buffing horsemen against ranged. Or overall, it ends up being the same, I guess, against ranged because you trade, uh, you're trade, you trading HP for armor, so it's kind of going to be the same, I imagine, considering the values. I don't think it's necessarily going to change the way horsemen um, deal with ranged, so I could be uh, wrong in that, but it's going to make them weaker against melee. That's the impact here. They're nerfing horsemen. I don't know how how great horsemen were, and I've heard people say that, oh, this is based on their internal testing. Okay, uh, all well and good. Uh, hand cannon damage reduced from 42 to 35, so they're nerfing hand cannons. They could be pretty crazy, uh, hand cannons in Imperial Age, and talking about that, that strength of artillery units in the Imperial Age. Uh, battering ram nerfs. People have asked about this, so movement speed reduced from 3 Point five to three health reduced uh, by two hundred population cost reduced from three to one so you can get more but they're pretty expensive units uh, ranged armor increased from fifteen uh, to thirty basically it's going to be easier to deal with rams using melee uh, units which already was the case but it's going to be more difficult to deal with them using range far more uh, difficult but overall uh, you're going to be in 
in a much better position uh, to deal uh, to deal with uh, the Rams, I feel, just because of that 200 uh, HP reduction. You are going to have to get into melee to make it work. Uh, Mangonel, a weapon reload time reduced from 8.75 to 6.75. Area effect change from 180 to 360. Ooh, that's uh, pretty nasty, honestly. That's a pretty solid buff to the Mangonels. Did they need it? Uh, yeah, probably they did, given the situation with Springles and Cannons. Uh, and then when it comes to Cannons, Fire Armor is increased on one type, is increased from 0 to 10, and Ranged Armor is reduced from 2 uh, to 0. So unranged uh, nerf. Still gonna want to use them, though. Uh, naval wise fishing boat with cost increase from 60 to 75 so you're not just going to be able to spam fishing boats as easily as you could before that that's a, a fact by the way when it comes to fishing boats it is so efficient to use fishing boats in age of empires 4 uh, for the sake of gathering food it's more efficient than having farms or or it could be similar, but there is obviously a benefit in having fishing boats. And now it's going to be less uh, efficient to have fishing boats, though. I'm not going to. I'm not sure. I would. I would pick villagers versus fishing boats. It's also a question of safety on certain maps. Like you can get your fishing boats in a really safe position uh, if you so desire. Airship bonus damage versus incendiary class increased from zero to uh, two x. So they're going to. So demo ships gonna be easier to deal with you know you can wipe out entire navies if that's the case uh, core buildings and upgrades outpost arrow slit and placement now also increases garrison arrow weapon range from six to eight okay uh so it's gonna make that upgrade more useful I'm gonna give you a reason to pick that upgrade versus others it probably was the least useful upgrade elite army tactics health and damage bonus increases from 10 to 20 percent only Elite you, uh, elite rank technology resource time reduced from 90 to 60, so easier to get to uh, those elite units. And then you get uh, civilization specific phalanx technology move from the House of Wisdom to the barracks. Though right now it's pretty bugged, so they need a hotfix. Composite bow technology move from House of Wisdom to Archer Range. They've just decided with the abbasids, oh, let's move some stuff from the House of Wisdom to various other structures. Okay, um, it's going to change some things, but. You could certainly get the House of Wisdom being flooded uh, with upgrades. Uh, and now you can get those from buildings. There's, of course, uh, the downside that you do need a blacksmith for a certain uh, challenge, but you do want to get that blacksmith. Um, anyway, uh, Chinese official tax collection ability reduced from 30 to 15 seconds. So buff there, Zugnu, uh, cost reduced from 60 to 20. Holy crap, that's a significant cost reduction. So I guess they felt that people weren't using Zug News uh, enough, and so they decided to make them significantly cheaper. Though they did nerf uh, they did nerf their HP by quite a bit, so they're not going to be quite as strong, but they want apparently people to get those Chico News um, in very large numbers. And they also reduced the tra tra training time from 22 to 15 seconds. And then nest of bees movement speed increased from 2.5 to 3.75. Nest of bees min, min, uh, minimum weapon range increased from 2.5 to 3. Uh, health reduced. So they've nerfed the health, but they've increased the damage. Uh, they reduced uh, the train time by a bit, move, improved the movement speed. I would call it a buff overall, though obviously it does make them even more of a glass cannon than they already were. Pyrotechnics technology move from the siege workshop to the university. All right. Um, so you do need that university to make uh, use of that. Uh, the Delhi Sultan at Sanctity Technology Age requirement decreased from dark to feudal. Scholar resource system has been adjusted to correlate with civs viable opportunities to produce scholars. Early technology research times have been reduced. Later ones increased. So uh, dark age technologies research time re reduced from 5x to 3x. Feudal age from 5x to 3.5x. Castle age remain unchanged at 5x, and imperial age technology research time multiplier increase from 5x to 15x. Oof, okay. Um, so the way I'm looking at this, um, the, the way I'm looking at this situation, you're going to see um, less of a situation where the Delhi just get to imperial age and just get a swarm of upgrades. Uh, though it is going to be faster for them to be able to get technologies early on. When it came to my uh, 
faction tier rankings or civilization tier rankings in this game, I rated the Delhi as dead last. And the reason is because they don't really have a strong early game. Now, sure, you can turtle up, and in some maps this works very well. You can turtle up and then take advantage of the late game bonuses that you do have as the Delhi. It does feel like this is a bit of a late game nerf, a bit of an early game buff, uh, to be honest. But there's downsides uh, to it. With English, longbow men set up camp will now deactivate if the longbow men enter combat. So you no longer have passive or health, uh, um, health regeneration during combat. It's an out, out of combat ability to regenerate your army. It's not, I guess they didn't like the fact that people are using it during combat to regenerate the HP of their units. And that's why they changed it. French reduced armor of French Hulk from six to two. So yeah, the French got a major, <laughs> major naval nerf uh, to a good degree here, which they honestly needed because they were doing very, very well on water given the French Hulks. This might make other factions far more competitive, though it's hard to say really. I mean, you get ballista ships uh, much earlier than anyone else can. Uh, I feel the French are still going to have a significant advantage on water early on, just because they do have the French hulks available when they do. Uh, but later on, in more late game battles, that's going. This is going to change the dynamic of that. Though, when it comes to naval battles, it's more about map control, like island control. Really, that's how it feels right now. Holy Roman Empire emerges to repair influence ability cooldown increased. So they've made it easier to deal with Holy uh, Roman Empire towns, though not to change outside of that. Maybe the HRE needs some some love uh, from Relic Entertainment. Um, Mongols, landmarks are now able to pack and unpack while at maximum population. Okay, raid uh, bounties, food, and gold plunder reduced from 100 to 75. Improve raid bounties, food, and gold plunder from 125 to 100. Con attack... Uh, Speed arrow no ability no longer affects each class unit. So the Mongols can gain a lot by raiding settlements. So they want to be very aggressive. They can't necessarily against say something like the French. Um, but this will this is a nerf to the Mongols. Are the Mongols really that strong right now? Against certain factions, absolutely. They can run in circles around them. And then they, they can raid their settlement and get quite a few resources for them. So maybe that's needed. Though I think the Mongols need a buff in uh, certain other areas. Uh, then the Rus Buyers 4 to 2 technology move from the stables to the blacksmith. They made some changes. I'm kind of questioning this one. I guess it's just so that your stables don't... Um, so that you, you're not longer wasting time on your stables. Lodia well, yeah, ships uh, that activate the roll switch will now incur a 50% movement speed penalty until the switch is complete. Okay. Well, yeah, fishing boat roll switch with cost increased by 25 per roll. So it's going to be more expensive. And then map specific changes. They've also changed um, the map. So ancient spires, player spawn recreation have been moved closer to center. Sacred sp site spawn have been updated. Okay, so an update there. Archipelago. Okay, we have seen a uh, case of players spawning on islands without some starting resources. Mongol island players, we hear you. We have determined this to be linked to players spawning too close to coastlines, which severely limits our distribution system ability to, uh, to find a spot for a set standard. We have now added in a step to our spawn algorithm that recalculates island real estate after each player is placed to find the central Okay, this helps to ensure that the most space we can give is available for the distribution system and it solves the problem of some players having their capital TC placed in a vulnerable position. We have bumped up the spawn priority on the starting zone deposit to help ensure that all resource types are available as expected. Well, hopefully that fixes it. Archipelago is a mess of a map. The naval maps aren't that great, to be honest with you. Uh, Black Forest, we balance the number of fish. And starting lakes to be identical across the map. Each lake should have five shore fish and three deep water fish. We add a large number of single trees in each player's starting area to both provide close short term wood for gathering and make the map feel more foresty. This actually was a bit of an issue on Black Forest that uh, your wood line could be in a very vulnerable position. We adjust the trade spawn location. Okay. And we remove the secret site and replace them with large gold deposit we found through uh, furrow. Uh, 
for a place testing that the map plays more uh, to the gameplay intention of Black Forest without the sacred site victory condition. And the gold income that was provided by site was bolstered by the additional large deposit that replaced them. Now, it's enabling only sacred victory and this map will now behave as if all victory conditions are turned off and the match will end with annihilation. We are working on ways to make this more obvious in the match setup screen, but felt that the gameplay impact was substantial enough to get in as early as we could. Uh, so, removing sacred sites from Black Forest, mm, pros and cons, pros and cons with that. I mean, Black Forest ends up, can end up being... Uh, uh, can end up being like a very turtle... Um, uh, turtle, a uh, uh, turtle uh, map, as it were. The sacred sites are a way to um, get past that. Uh, removing them, it's both good and bad. It's both good and bad in that it uh, removes um, and changes the dynamic from people who are just like, oh, I'll turtle at this point and then that point, and then take the sacred sites, and uh, it's difficult. It can be difficult to dislodge someone. So they decided that probably wasn't a good idea. And instead, you're just going to have to eliminate your opponent. Uh, Boulder base. Starting resources have been adjusted to be less full than full, uh, to be less than full naval maps, but still higher than standard land maps. Okay. Spawn placements have been turned uh, tuned to place players further away from the coastlines to cut down on unbalanced naval danger. All right. Confluence spawn position large uh, multi-team game have been improved and improved the readability, uh, reliability of crossing uh, spawns. Daniel River, this one really needs a change because it it could create. There were a lot of imbalanced spawns on this map. We felt a version of the map that shipped resulted in a high number of unbalanced spawns, where players and teams could spawn on a smaller chunk of the, of the map or have difficult access to resource and sacred sites. We have done an overhaul of this map layout to have much more consistent and balanced generation par parameters. The map layout image in the lobby has been updated to reflect the new layout as well. The new Danube features a new shape river that spawns Stelfars, one of the uh, sacred sites and trade posts, making it an important area to contest. The second, uh, second sacred site will spawn atop a cliff on the west side of the map. Uh, and yeah, maybe some feedback. Let's check it out when it comes out. But yeah, Danube River need a change. French Pass, we reduced the erosion multiplier, multiplier to eliminate instances of past trenches running through the Central Valley, which could reduce build space and cause unnecessary map clutter. Okay, Hill and Dale, trade post, not spawn along the map page exactly opposite one another. And the number of central resource deposits have been slightly reduced. Okay. Uh, King of the Hill, we had the three individual trees that were missing around the starting TC. All right, so just a bit more tree. Uh, Lipani, on larger map sizes, players have been moved closer to the center. Mongolia Heights, we fixed a rare issue. So it feels to me, when I'm looking at this, beyond and, and then a whole bunch of fixes, bug fixes, uh, so camel barding, all that. You know, I could go into a lot of details, but yeah, they fixed, uh, they fixed a, a bunch of stuff. Uh, right now with regards to uh, to the game. Uh, here's what I think about it. I think that this is less of a balance patch, though obviously there are a decent number of balance changes, but it's less about that. It's more about map fixes, map changes, bug fixes. And there are some known issues uh, with the patch. It is a welcome development, um, but there's still plenty of issues that do continue to plague the game in terms of the balance between the factions, which is not in a great uh, position. This is going to help, but we need to start talking about like the French early game dominance, uh, for instance. And the fact that the only thing they did with the French was just reduce the armor of their hulks is like, really? Is that all you're going to do right now? Because they're at. Or the fact that the late game is such an artillery spam. Those are the kind of things that need to be talked about, maybe dealt with. Now, maybe they do enjoy the idea that the late game is all about getting as much artillery and archers and crossbowmen as possible with some horsemen and spearmen thrown in the mix. If you do have those Imperial Age, late Imperial Age battles, maybe they do enjoy that. Uh, maybe that's what they want. I would hope not. I'm not fond of it, I admit. But maybe that's what the developers, maybe that's why Relic sees, uh, sees this... Uh, the direction of their game uh, going uh, towards those kind of battles. Like early game cavalry dominates and then later on range dominates. That's how it is and that's how it's going to be. 
they fix some things, improve some things. It feels more that they're addressing like early game issues to an extent, though they're not talking about the big one, which, yeah, Royal Knights, we need to talk about that. We need to talk about how easily the French can just get the Night Rush going and how it's very difficult to beat that because they have regeneration on their Knights. They do have, um, they can and they can get Knights faster than anyone else in the game. That's something they should consider tackling. Will they? We'll see. Anyway, Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.